Okay, uh, in today's lesson we're going to look at a brief history of astronomy and we're going to do it in three parts. So this is the first of three parts and we're going to be looking at how we predict the seasons. We talked about how historically it was important for uh, people to be able to predict the seasons for uh, planting crops, for migrating uh, animals, for food stocks, and so on. So, how did they go about do they, doing that? Well, um, it was vital in ancient cultures. It could be done using the position of the stars, but also by the position of the sun. Uh, the reason we have seasons is because of the tilt of the earth. Uh, because the earth is tilted, for half of our orbit around the sun, the, uh, the sun shines more uh, directly on the northern hemisphere and for the other half of the year it shines more on the, on the southern hemisphere. So when it's shining uh, more on the northern hemisphere it's summer in the north and winter in the southern hemisphere and vice versa when it's more uh, shining more directly on the southern hemisphere it's summer down there while it's winter up here. There's a little simulation we can use to see how this is the case, and I've provided a link to that. Okay, so here's a little simulation which uh, shows the effects of the tilt of the Earth. We've got several different windows. Uh, the upper window shows the Earth orbiting the Sun, and in there is the angle of the sunlight on a position uh, on the Northern Hemisphere. In the window below, it shows what the Sun would look like in the sky. So at the moment, this is if the Earth had no, uh, no tilt to it, but the Earth actually has a tilt of about 23 degrees. So we can see up top here how that tilt uh, of the Earth lies relative to the, uh, the orbit. So what we can do is we can move that Earth kind of over here, and when we do that, we see that the, the, the sun is very high in the sky from day to day. Okay, so there it is in the summer, the sun's high up in the sky, and the angle of sunlight is quite high beating down on, uh, on the earth in the northern hemisphere, and that's what it's like in summer. If we come around to winter, we can see that it's a very low angle of sunlight, and the sun only rises a little bit into the sky. It's much lower, lower angle of sunlight, shorter days, less warmth, and that's why it's, it's colder in the winter and warmer in the summer. So there's a few key dates in this whole kind of cycle of where the sun is in the sky. Uh, the first is the, uh, the spring equinox, and the spring equinox occurs when the sun uh, moves across that line of the celestial equator. In other words, its declination is at zero on its way upward. And that is the first day of spring. It's March 21st, usually, um, depending on if there's a leap year or where you are uh, and what you know, um, time zone you're in and so on. But it's usually around March 21st. Next is the, the summer solstice, which is the peak of summer. Uh, which is June 21st, or sometimes we call it the first day of summer. Um, and it's the point when the sun is at its farther, uh, farthest point north. Uh, and so for us, it's the longest day of the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, it would be the shortest day in the Southern Hemisphere. The fall equinox is when the sun is on its way back down uh, south in declination and again it crosses the equator that happens on September 21st and then the winter solstice is when uh, the Sun reaches its uh, maximum southerly declination so it's the shortest day of the year for us so the equinoxes are when the Sun crosses the equator and the solstices occur when the Sun reaches its extremes of declination the path that this charts across the sky is, uh, is called the ecliptic. Uh, and in fact, because everything in our solar system is kind of lies in a plane, as we will see, pretty much everything in our solar system lies along the ecliptic. Um, and we can see here by this chart, this yellow line 
uh, where I've just highlighted the dashed line, and that represents the ecliptic. So any of the solar system objects, the sun, the moon, the planets, and so on, when we look for them, they will lie along that line of the ecliptic. Uh, it looks like, a, like a, an S shape on this graph, or on this chart, but if you wrap this around to a spherical view of the sky, it just it forms a it forms a horizontal plane that's slightly offset uh, from our axis because the Earth is tilted. Okay, so early people used a number of things to uh, predict the seasons, and one of the things they used were uh, structures that were referred to as henges. So this is probably the most famous one. This is Stonehenge in England. And uh, it's a series of giant monolithic stones arranged in such a way that at certain times of year, uh, this is kind of a reconstruction. So on the summer solstice, the longest day of the year, the sun would uh, rise right between these two stones and the light from that rising sun would come right the way through here between these two giant stones and uh, hit this uh, central altar stone. And so that would be kind of a significant event and they would know that that was the, the date of the longest day of the year. There's a number of other points along here where we can, uh, or where they could have uh, placed the dates and so on, but that was one of the most significant ones.